And that crop is always a crapshoot when it's time to draft, and it's even more of one this year, just like last year, but even more this year, because last year there was limited information in the run-up to the draft, but full information from the prior football season. This year, limited information from the prior football season, limited information in the run-up to the draft, no scouting combine this year, unlike last year. It really is even more of a shot in the dark with some of these prospects, and you have to trust your scouting department to find a way to give you some basis to believe that a guy is going to thrive at the next level when we know that for every guy there's a ceiling somewhere between whatever he has done in college and the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and it's impossible to figure out where that ceiling is. That is the biggest challenge in scouting, and that is the thing that makes all the time and effort and money that's spent it, at times feel meaningless because you just don't know, Peter, how that guy is going to respond the first time he faces NFL caliber competition. Is he going to win or is it going to beat him? And is he just going to be relegated at best to career backup status? And that's the one thing that will constantly elude these scouts and these folks who think that there's some magical formula out there. There isn't because you don't know what that guy's going to do until he gets, for lack of a better phrase, hit in the face by a grown man. Sometimes you rise up to that challenge and sometimes you don't. And you don't know what that guy is going to do until he's in that situation. Well, Mike, all you have to do is look at the second pick in this draft. Look at Zach Wilson, the quarterback at Brigham Young. I've said it before on this show. One year ago today, Zach Wilson was in a three-man competition for the starting quarterback job at BYU in a totally fractured offseason. Because BYU, for many weeks, could not do the workouts with spring football at its own facility because of COVID. So Zach Wilson did not win this job last year until August. And then you look at what Zach Wilson did during the season. Brigham Young had an excellent schedule last year going into the year. But then all the games got canceled. And the athletic director, Tom Homo, had to invent a new schedule out of whole cloth. So instead of playing, you know, the upper Division I teams, he's scrambling to, to get teams to play like Troy. And, and so that is what happened. And so now you've got to make a judgment on Zach Wilson. He wins the job in August. He's the quarterback starting in September against uh, a significantly lesser uh, set of competition. And so now you have to make a judgment. If you're Joe Douglas and you're, uh, you're Mike LaFleur, the offensive coordinator of the Jets and Robert Sala, you have to make this judgment based on stuff that you wish you could see more. You wish that you could hang out in your facility and put uh, Zach Wilson up on the board and interact with him and everything. You can't do it. And I'm not saying that Zach Wilson isn't going to make it. I like Zach Wilson. I like him a lot. But there is just so many question marks. And he exemplifies those question marks in this year's draft. That schedule that BYU played this year, at one point Sims and I ran through it. And there was at least one school on there that my reaction was, what the hell is that school? I've never heard of that school in my 55 years of existence. That's the kind of schedule that BYU had to slap together, and that's the conundrum that the Jets face, although everything seems like the Jets are locked on to Zach Wilson. There's been no effort this week by the Jets, publicly or privately, to push back against the idea that now that Sam Darnold has been traded, Zach Wilson is is the guy. There was the question this week posed to Joe Douglas about Steve Young, the former BYU quarterback, suggesting Wilson is the guy, and Douglas kind of joked about it. And you could just see, Peter, the difference between the general managers who are playing poker and those who are in position to count their chips. Douglas has no reason to pretend that his hand is anything other than what it is because after Trevor Lawrence to the Jaguars, and we'll talk about him in a minute, Douglas controls the board. He doesn't have to act like he may take someone other than Zach Wilson. And I know there are people who think that 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 the Jets may not take Zach Wilson, but you've got you've to do something to push back against the growing notion in your fan base, Peter, 
that Zach Wilson isn't the guy if he isn't the guy because folks are going to be in for a shock in 20 days if the name is anything other than Zach Wilson. Here's the thing. Uh, I think, you know, I, it, what is the, I just looked up the Brigham Young schedule, Mike. Was it North Alabama? Was it Texas San Antonio? Was it Texas? That State? one. <laughs> it was Texas San Antonio. Texas UTSA. State. I saw UTSA okay, and yeah. I was like, what the hell is that? Is that a bank somewhere? <laughs> hey, look, I think, I think the reason why Joe Douglas, and look, Mike, I reported whatever three weeks ago, whenever that trade was made, that the 49ers had uh, checked with the Jets at number two uh, and were told, I believe, in no uncertain terms that we're not moving this pick. I think here's how it went for the Jets this offseason, Mike. Robert Sala gets hired, and I believe he tells Joe Douglas some words to this effect. I like Sam Darnold. Uh, Mike LaFleur, my offensive coordinator, likes Sam Darnold. And if you want to keep him, it's absolutely fine with us. We're, we're, we're happy to go, you know, to go into battle with, with Sam Darnold. But they said, okay, look, let's just study all these guys. Let's study what happens during the offseason and, and look at all the games of all the quarterbacks and then make a decision. And they made their decision that there was a quarterback worth taking it to after Trevor Lawrence because they assumed all along that Jacksonville was taking Trevor Lawrence. And that quarterback was Zach Wilson. Now, I don't know if inside that team it was unanimous, but I do know that that is the guy uh, that clearly uh, is liked by most of the people inside the Jets, including Joe Douglas. And so no matter what, and, and I believe, look, I think Steve Young wants to see Zach Wilson go to the 49ers. But, you know, that's not going to happen. You know, Zach Wilson is going to go to the Jets. He's going to be picked number two. And then the Jets, you know, Mike, yesterday, a very little piece of news. Jets are interested in Brian Hoyer as their backup. And, and I have this question, and I'd love to hear your thought. Why not Alex, Wilson, uh, Alex Smith? Why not Alex Smith for the backup? And then I found out that Alex Smith's price tag might be a little bit too uh, heavy to be a tutor uh, to Zach Wilson. So I think that's why Zach Wilson um, is going to have Brian Hoyer or looks likely to have Brian Hoyer as his uh, put your arm around the shoulder kid. I'm playing Josh McCown. Yeah, I think that makes a ton of sense. And they're going to need someone like that if they want to get Zach Wilson ready to go right out of the gates week one and another thing joe douglas said and we've seen this dynamic play out this year because there are no private workouts everything is public at these pro days multiple pro days for the high-end quarterback so there are multiple opportunities for coaches and gms to go watch them throw douglas said you don't ever take a quarterback until you stand next to him and watch him throw a football or as in the case of urban meyer hear the football come out of his hands and that to me peter a week or two ago when urban meyer didn't go to the BYU Pro Day. It was two weeks ago. The days are really blending together and they continue to do so. But when Meyer didn't go, that to me made it ink, underlined, highlighted Trevor Lawrence won and jets on the clock for Zach Wilson. And again, it, it just feels like that's the way it's going. And if they're going in any other direction, there will be shock on the cover and back page and everywhere else of the New York tabloids in three weeks because it's all setting up Zach Wilson and their PR sensibilities will be completely off base if they don't do something between now and then to make people think it's someone else because I'd be sh I'd be sh beyond shocked at this point if it's not Zach Wilson. I, I think we can, we can, for as much as we can put Lawrence in ink at one, we can put Wilson in ink at two. I, I think so too, Mike. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.